Hey, good afternoon, y'all. I'm gonna fix a little lunch. Uh, what I'm gonna do is make broccoli and cheese with bacon. And it should be quick and easy and really good. I've already started dicing up some bacon. I'm gonna make a, a dish that serves about eight servings. Um, and I'm gonna start out with uh, frying up some bacon. Just diced up, I sliced it in half, and then I'm gonna do it in, mm, that's probably about three quarter inch uh, pieces here. And it makes it quick, cook quicker, and I don't have to like tear it all to pieces after it cooks to have like bacon bits. So, I'm gonna put this on seven to start up with, <clears throat> but I don't wanna actually cook it at seven, I just wanna get, get the skillet good and warm, and then I'll turn it down. How's everybody doing today? It's been a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful spring day today. And I hate to even come in and stop, but I'm getting hungry. So I thought I better get in here and fix something good before I starve to death. <laughs> I'm going to put, uh, these are baby broccoli is what it's called. It doesn't have this great big florette. It's just a, uh, um, I'll show you. It's just, it, it looks more like the stems, small thin stems with a few florets on the end, but not like this great big bunch, you know. And uh, it'll be good. It'll be real good. And then I'm going to do some sharp white cheddar cheese, because that's just what I had. I think any cheddar cheese would do good. Um, you could probably even do a variety of different cheeses. I had, <laughs> I have um, some white cheddar cheese with uh, horseradish that's in it and I thought that would be good on it but I I couldn't find it and I didn't want to spend all day digging out the drawer. I know it's in the drawer with all the other cheeses and and sausage and dried meats and stuff but I I didn't sit on top so I just grabbed this one. It'll be it'll be good with without the horseradish. Lots of people don't like horseradish. It's too hot or too spicy so I just separate those a little bit and let that let that heat up a little bit more and then I'll turn it down to I'll go ahead and put it on six. I'm gonna have to turn it back down to, to five here in just a minute. While that's cooking I'm going to shred my cheese. If you buy pre-shredded cheese um, there's, there's something about it that I just don't think is nearly as good. Uh, I don't know if they coat it with some kind of wax coating or something to make it not dry out. It, it just doesn't taste as good as a block cheese that you grade yourself. It's kind of a pain if, if, um, if you're short on time. But it really doesn't take that long to grade cheese. I'm going to grade this whole block. The packet of, um, of broccoli that I have is uh, 24 ounces, which serves eight. And this block of cheese serves eight, it's eight ounces. And the bacon, I did eight slices, which is uh, one of serving per, per slice. So, the uh, the dish I'm going to say served eight with you know it all mixed together. I'm also going to put a little splash of lemon juice on it. It helps kind of keep it bright and brings out the flavors. I don't want to make it taste lemony. I just want to just enhance the existing flavors with a teeny tiny splash of of um, lemon lemon juice. Okay. I don't know, a little trick I use frequently, 
when I'm doing veggies, especially green veggies, they, they always it seems to just bring out the flavors. There's a chef that's on probably on the cooking channel. I don't I don't get the cooking channel since I canceled cable, but uh, she's on Facebook. I can't remember her name right now, but she <laughs> she always always puts lemon juice at the end, always, and says, it just brightens it up, it just brightens it up, she says that over and over and over, and it's true, it does, <laughs> it brightens your dish up, but I, I laugh every time she says it, because she, she says that every time she uses it, I think that didn't take me to half a second to grate that cheese, well, maybe two seconds, anyway, it didn't take long, and it'll be a thousand times better than, than uh, pre-trade stuff. Let me get these stirred around a little bit. I don't want to blacken them. I just want it crispy. Not too crispy, not overcooked. But I don't want it, uh, you know, undercooked. Some people don't like it crispy. Some people like bacon, you know, more tender. And I may do a little bit of all of it. You just do whatever you like. It doesn't have to be one way or the other. But I like a little bit of crunch. It kind of adds to the texture of this. I'm going to try not to overcook my broccoli as well because I want a little al dente, you know, crunch to it. But I, I want it to be sauteed. So what I'm going to do, <clears throat> instead of steaming it, I'm going to, in this bacon grease, I'm going to kind of flash fry it, blanch it, if you will, in bacon grease, if that makes any sense. But, as you all know, I like to wash my dishes <laughs> as I go, so I apologize for nobody wants to actually wash Somebody else wants to me. But I enjoy talking to y'all. If I turn y'all off while I did that, I'd just, I'd just be talking to myself. So <laughs> I still got it on six, and that's still pretty good. I'm not going to turn it down. <clears throat> that looks Good, it's starting to smell really good. I love the smell of bacon and I love the smell of cooked onions, onion cooking. I think that's the secret that some recipes, some restaurants do is, is cook onion, whether they're going to put it in any in, in the dishes or not, just because it's, it makes you hungry, it smells great. So here's my cheese, all shredded up. That's eight ounces. It looks like a whole lot more when it's shredded, but it's really just a eight ounce block. All right, I'm gonna shut you off while that cooks because it's gonna take a few minutes and I don't wanna sit here and hear me ramble. So you can tell your bacon's getting close to being done when it starts getting quiet. That's when it's it, you're gonna be in trouble if you don't tend to it. It's, it will burn really quick when it starts getting really quiet. When it's popping and sizzling and going, it's, it's doing you know, it's got a lot of moisture in there, but I think it's quiet. So, again, I always say you use your senses. Use all of them, including your hearing when you're cooking, because it'll cue you in. That's when you're the danger zone, because you get to working on something else and doing dishes and yammering about something else, and you, you because it's not loud and sizzling and making a bunch of noise, you kind of run the risk of forgetting about it or neglecting it for just just two seconds too long and then it's black or burnt or overdone. So bacon's one of those when it starts getting quiet. Now when it starts to pop, pop you know, popping, you're you're in the money. But I'm gonna not wait because I didn't really want these all completely overcooked. So I think that's just about got it. I'm gonna turn that down and move this over and get that cooled down for just a sec while I get these out. I'm gonna put a paper towel in here for just a minute to kind of help drain off the excess. 
grease. You don't have to do that because I'm cooking it in the grease, but I don't want it to be greasy, you know? So, and this is the bowl I'm going to end up using, putting it all in there, and I'm trying to conserve it in my dishes, not use them all every meal. Be good this would be good with some cooked onions but i put onions and everything and i i'm just not gonna do that i'll probably over overuse them i'm gonna scooch that back over here even though it's powerfully hot when i put this broccoli in there it's gonna cool off a little bit see these are more like uh they call it baby spinach. It's not the great big, you know, floral, floral heads that you normally get and smack on and use. And, uh, oh, I was at a restaurant with my sisters and they served this lanky stuff. And I'm like, oh, that looks so good. And it was really good. So I decided that's what I was going to do today. And see, I just want to flash fry them. I do not want to overcook them. I want that bright green. And if you don't pull it off, right after it kind of gets that bright green, you end up with um, you end up with I'm just going to leave them. I could have cut them up into smaller pieces. But I thought it would be easier if so I'm doing this kind of in batches since I'm flash frying it. If I put them all in there, it would have cooled the dish down and then they would have been heated up. It had taken a long time and it just kind of got soggy. But I don't know if you can see that, how bright green those are. They're just al dente. I mean, they're barely cooked. Just enough where it's starting to wilt. If you leave it on there too long uh, or a little any longer, It'll get really dull, and that's dull, in my, you know, that's fresh. But if you, if you leave it on there, uh, overcook it, it'll get even paler than this. Even though it looks really bright, it will quickly turn real pale and look colorless. And, and I don't know why I can using the senses, stuff that doesn't look as bright and, and scrumptious doesn't taste as good. I think it's your brain going, yeah, that can't possibly be good. I'm sure it tastes fine, except it may be, you know, not that little crunch that I'm after. So, I'm trying to put these over and get them good and flashed on all sides. I probably could use some tongs to be better than, than my spatula, but this is working okay. Anyway, I've been working on my garden today. I'm getting it ready to till, and I like to grow a lot of my own veggies. We have, uh, you know, a pretty decent growing season in North Texas. It's Probably pretty good. Uh, I may have to put a little more grease in there. I'm going to put peanut oil. You could use olive oil or canola oil or something that's got a high burn point. This actually is better than the bacon grease, but the bacon grease just tastes so good. <laughs> so, if you had a lot of bacon to cook, you could cook up a batch of it, you know, and save some for later and pour off excess grease, use it, you know, in situations like this where you need just to smooth more, have your little jar, and, uh, it will do good. I've got maybe mm -hmm. one more batch to do after this one. Yeah, a good olive oil, you know, that olive oil is supposed to be really good for you. I just happen to not, not have any, so I'll use the peanut oil. And I don't know about calories and all that. I don't know which one, you know, I've got more 
calories, but the, the olive oil has got this really good healthy oil that's in it. So I know it's, it's better to use olive oil if you got it. It just ran out, I guess. Flip that over. It sure smells good, y'all. Normally, I would take the bacon out and <laughs> sprinkle it on top, but I'm just going to mix all this together. I'm going to get my cheese in here. I might even have to microwave it a little bit. Uh, I'm going to try to microwave it before uh, the, the cheese, uh, just to soften it. I don't want to completely uh, melt it in the microwave, but that's just a snoop bar right there. But uh, I'm going to wait. do that last. I've got broccoli. I've got broccoli in my garden right now, but I've, I've let it bloom. I've let it go, some of it go to seed, so I didn't have enough to do a, this big uh, dish. So I went ahead and bought a little package of these. And the bees, the honeybees are loving the bloom. Oh, there's a pretty yellow, little tiny yellow flower, and they smell so good. And the bees are everywhere. They're loving it. I mean, this time of year, everything starts blooming, but right now, uh, there's not a ton of things in blooming. You know, and with over the next couple of weeks, everything will be in bloom. This is, uh, Oh, just a few days before Easter. I think Easter is this Sunday, so usually right around Easter, that's when everything just goes crazy around here. And I'm going to turn that off. Put those in here. Actually, it would have been a little easier. Than that. And then I'm gonna scooch this back in the burner. And I'm just gonna watch this. I, I just wanna put it in there for a few seconds and kinda, you know, get the chill off of it. I'm gonna say 30, but it won't take that long. I don't want it to be all mushy. that around get the bacon mixed in good with it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that looks good look at that doesn't that look incredible anyway I don't want like dripping grease it's just coated lightly coated and let's see what happened here did I mess it up no it's just about right it's just about right. Let's just use this, I guess. See, it just kind of softened it. Let me put that over there where you can see it. It just kind of softened it a little bit. And I'm just sprinkling it, and I'm going to stir a little bit, and then I'm going to sprinkle some more. That way everybody gets a little cheese, everybody gets a little bacon, and I just <laughs> included the dog, apparently. I don't have a dog, but if I did, it'd be right here. Yeah. Oh, that looks good. Anyway. Lots of people like to make a cheese sauce and have it runny. Or, you know, I do too. There's different recipes. But this, I just wanted a, a sprinkling of cheese. It'll melt and bind to it as it sets here for a minute. 
but I didn't want to, I didn't want a cheese sauce. I didn't want a, these pretty uh, uh, broccoli. I didn't want to just completely coat it in, you know, in cheese. I want to see that bright green, golly. Look at that. Isn't that great? That cheese will continue to melt. Mmm, that's so fresh and so good. And that al dente's got that good crunch, but that bacon and that cheese. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. All right, thank y'all for coming. Oh, I was going to put a little lemon juice on there. I didn't have a... I didn't have a, a fresh lemon, so I'm just using this lemon, this canned lemon juice. But that will help. That will help brighten it up. It really will. Alright, y'all have a blessed day. Thank you so much for joining us.